This is Dr. Sirisha working as Associate Professor in Institute of Aeronautical Engineering College. Today we are going to discuss about recursive algorithms. Algorithm is nothing but a stepwise representation of a solution of any given problem. We generally give, uh, in, in general terms also, we give solutions to the problem in a stepwise manner. Similarly, in programming languages also, we can address the solution of a problem in a stepwise manner that is nothing but the logic. Algorithms generally consist of input variables, the output what you are going to get and the basic logic which is required to solve that particular problem, right? So these problems can be resolved in recursive way also, which they call themselves. A function which generally calls itself is known as a recursive function. Today we are going to discuss about the same. Right? There, there are basically two parts of any recursive function, base case and recursive case. What is base case? A base case is nothing but a function which calls this recursive function, which is going to call it. Then the recursive case is a case or a function which calls itself. So always a recursive function must have some breaking point to come out of itself and reach the base class. Here, the base class can be any main function or any sub function. It can be anything, right? These will be the two parts of any recursive function, base case and recursive case. There will be two types of recursive functions. One will be direct recursion and the other is indirect recursion direct recursion. If a function calls only itself is nothing but direct recursion. Have a look at the example which I have given over there. The function name is example and the function is calling itself. If you look into this keenly, so this function when it is called by a base case during course of uh, executing some pieces of code, the function is going to call itself. Thereby, the control will again reach the head of the function definition and it starts executing itself once again. Again, it is going to encounter this statement that is the function call of itself. Again, this process continues. Right. So, always a recursive function must be written in such a way that its logic must break itself, right? So, this kind of recursion is nothing but direct recursion. Have a look at indirect recursion. In the in indirect recursion, say two functions are there, f1 and f2. Then, if f1 calls f2, then f2 is going to call f1. It will be cyclic process. Have a look at the example which I have displayed over here. Example 1 is a function. During course of execution of pieces of code, it is called F example 2 and another function call. Control is going to drag it to the other function which is example 2. After execution of few statements, example 1 is being called. It is the function which has called example 2 actually. The control is going to shift to example 1. So, if you look at this example, you can see that they are calling each other mutually. Even here, the cyclic process is there, but an in indirect sense. In an indirect sense. So, this is known as indirect recursion. Even in indirect recursion, either f1 example 1 function or example 2 function. The sense as per the definition of indirect recursion, either f1 or f2 must have a breaking point to break this chain. So these are the two kinds of recursions which we encounter in solving any problem while writing any algorithm. Both are adoptable, right? Have a look at this example. I'm going to explain this with a simple example, which is nothing but 
factorial of the number. Okay. So algorithm starts as you guys know, algorithm starts with the name of the algorithm first of all and the parameters which is going to take. Okay. So the name of the algorithm is fact and it is going to take a positive integer as a parameter. So the input of this function will be x and the output will be factorial of that x. Yes, I hope you know how we calculate factorial of a number. 5 factorial is nothing but 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. Right? So mathematically, this is the factorial of any given number. That means if it is n factorial, n into n minus 1 into n minus 1, 2 into so on into 3 into 2 into 1 will be the basic formula to calculate the factorial of any number. Let's look at the function. So the function over here is fact. And I have defined this function in a recursive manner. How? Have a look at the definition. Fact is the name and it is taking x as a parameter, a positive integer. So x is a positive integer. And in the written statement, you can see here is a function called with the same name fact and even it is taking a number x minus 1, right? So, hence we can say that it is a recursive function. Then how it is going to get executed? Let's look at the same point. Let x be 5, okay? In the first function call, you are going to pass fact of 5, right? Then is it less than or equal to 1? No, the condition fits. So it is going to return x into fact of x minus 1. What is the value of x? It is 5. So 5 into fact of 4. This is again a function call in itself, recursive function. This function call will enter into the definition of the fact and even that is going to check. Is 4 less than or equal to 1? Condition fails. So this function is going to return 4 into fact of 3. Next, fact of 3 is also a function called to itself. So is 3 less than or equal to 1? Condition fails. So it will go to the else part, executing the written statement 3 into fact of 2. Right? So, fact of 2 is also an another function called to itself. So, this function call is 2 less than or equal to 1, condition fails. When the condition fails, it enters the else part where the written statement 2 into fact of 1 is going to raise. Fact 1, fact 1 is 1 less than or equal to 1, the condition satisfies and it returns 1. So, now the function which have uh, called or which resulted in the result 1 is by fact 1. So, 1 will is going to get written over here. Then, who called the function, uh, the function which resulted into 2 into 1? Function 2. So, 2 into 1 are going to come over here as a written value. Then, who called the function? which resulted into 3 into 2 into 1. It is fact 3. So, 3 into 2 into 1 are going to return to fact 3 function. What will be the return value of fact 4? 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. Then what will be the return value of fact of 5? 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. So, the return value of fact 5 is 5 into 4 into 3 into 1, right? So this is how in a ladder wise a recursive function is going to execute itself. Yes, I hope you understood how a recursive function works. Yes, recursive functions are going to use stacks to store some of the data. Some of the data means the written address which is the, actually the address or where you have to return. As I said, we have backtracked from function. 
factor of 1 to factor of 2 to factor of 3 to factor of 4 to factor of 4, 5. We backtrack. But where were the addresses? The addresses, the written addresses of each and every function were stored in a stack. The beauty of this stack is that it, we can access only the most recently inserted element which is pointed by the top variable, right? So, using uh, taking the privilege of that, uh, for that feature of a stack, we pick the latest address, that is the latest function calls address from a stack. This is how a recursive function is going to work. Let's look at the pros and cons of recursion. What are the advantages? Basic advantage is uh, we only need to define a base class and a logically written recursive class, which is similar to and uh, a shorter version of uh, iterative codes. Much, much, much more simpler when compared to the same logic when we implement using iterations or loops. So, recursive functions are very useful when we work with the uh, problems which have inheritance in their properties or in their attributes like graph and tree traversals, right? If you go for pre-order, post-order, in-order, in every iteration, they go with the same formula. You are, they're going to recurse themselves or they iterate themselves with the same formula. So, in those cases, we can use the property of a recursion. Similarly, in graphs. When we use, when we traverse in a graph using depth first search or breadth first search, the basic funda of working with these uh, traversal techniques will be the same. So, a recursive function is much, much, much more easier to write when compared to iterative functions. Right? These will be the advantages. Then what are the disadvantages? Basic disadvantage is usage of stack. As I said, we recurse as a stack has a, 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 the advantage of accessing only the most recently inserted element. We can access the most recently used address of the function call. So recursive functions use a stack, which uh, that means more greater space, may more and more space is required to adopt that technique. And it also needs time. Loops they run in that function itself. The control doesn't go to memory to fit something or to deviate itself. But in case of recursive functions, a replicate is going to break itself and it is going to restart itself, right? So to return back to the function call, so we need to retrieve the address from the stack. So the amount of time required to execute a recursive function is much more when compared to the logic which can be implemented using iterations. So these are the basics of uh, recursive functions which we have seen. What a recursive function is, what are the types of recursion and how it can be implemented, and what are the pros and cons of a recursive function. I hope you understood these functions. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.